Hello, fellow sojourners, and welcome back to another edition of Appropriate in the Culture. I hope you all had a very Merry Christmas, that you kept Christ in Christmas, and we hope that you have a wonderful celebration ringing in the new year, 2022, the year of our Lord, because on today's episode, we'll be discussing the attack of initialism and the downplaying of Christendom in the shaping of Western civilization. I'm Pastor Shane. I'll be your calendar man today as we appropriate some culture. <laughs> Well, it's almost time to ring in the New Year on New Year's Eve, which is really a quite fascinating and unique celebration because it's so universal. Every single year you'll see fireworks being shot off and celebrations taking place in all parts of the globe. I grew up in Japan. All the stores were open on Christmas Day. The grocery stores were not crowded during Thanksgiving week. Halloween was particularly awkward. And the neighbors were just annoyed when we were firing off fireworks on the 4th of July. Right? Every country and culture has different holidays and celebrations, and yet we are all increasingly bound to this calendar. Throughout human civilization, there have been different calendars, different means for tracking the years and Earth's rotation around the sun. You still have local and cultural distinctions, like the Chinese New Year and other lunar solar calendars with important celebrations tied to them. And yet, we will see celebrations all over the world on New Year's Eve and New Year's Day in accordance with a Gregorian calendar, so named because it was instituted by Pope Gregory, the Super Bowl XIII. I think that's how you read that. Anyway, it was adopted because the inaccuracies of the Julian calendar were disrupting our very important Christian holidays. Here's a decent summary from Wikipedia. There were two reasons to establish the Gregorian calendar. First, the Julian calendar assumed incorrectly that the average solar year is exactly 365.25 days long, an overestimate of a little under one day per century. The Gregorian reform shortened the average calendar year by 0.0075 days to stop the drift of the calendar with respect to the equinoxes. Second, in the years since the First Council of Nicaea in AD 325, the excess leap days introduced by the Julian algorithm had caused the calendar to drift such that the northern spring equinox was occurring well before its nominal 20 1st March date. This date was important to the Christian churches because it is fundamental to the calculation of the date of Easter. So our current calendar is in no small part due to the importance of Christianity in the world. And likewise, the year is inextricably connected to Christ and Christianity. It is BC, before Christ, and AD, Anno Domini, which is Latin for the year of our Lord. It is an inescapable fact that we call this new year 2022 because of Christendom. It is emphatically a religious statement. In other cultures, at other times, the year was defined by the year of the reign of the ruler, right? The monarch or emperor. In fact, you see this in many places in scripture, like here. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord in the 10th year of Zedekiah, king of Judah, which was the 18th year of Nebuchadnezzar. Now, historically, this makes calculations somewhat difficult because it's not universal. Who's reigning here is not who's reigning there, and it's all very messy. But the fact that we'll be celebrating that this is the year 2022 is a wonderful theological point because he is the king of kings and the lord of lords. He's not like the other kings and other rulers, right? Their reign was local. His reign is over the whole earth. Their reign ends with their death and the year resets. But Jesus lives forever and his kingdom lasts forever, and so we just keep on counting. What a statement that is, that the world has been subjected to Christ. And even people who do not claim Christ, who do not confess him as Lord, must still, with every check that they sign, with every official document that they date, and even the birth date on their driver's license, declare and is marked by the year of our Lord. And that's naturally upsetting to many people. And so in recent history, our society has opted to designate the years as BCE and CE. BCE, of course, stands for Bigot Calendar Enforced. Bullcrap Emitter. Baloney Kumquat Ew. No, of course, it stands for Before Common Era, and CE stands for Common Era. The commonness of the era being defined by something. Not sure. 
Definitely not Jesus, though. Now, proponents of BCE and CE will say the notion of common error was introduced way back in the 1600s, which is technically true. It was sporadically called the vulgar, vulgar era, but CE was also sporadically called the Christian era. And even the references to the common error are not in isolation from Christianity. So, for instance, writings from the 1700s would say stuff like this. Before the beginning of the vulgar era, by which we now compute the years from his incarnation. Or, vulgar error of the nativity. Vulgar meaning common, but that was not a common designation until the 20th century. So why the need to embrace BCE and CE? Well, let's turn to LearnReligions.com for some learning. They say, There are several good reasons to choose BCE and CE over BC and AD. AD is almost certainly inaccurate. If Jesus existed, he almost certainly wasn't born in the year suggested. Wow. That's quite a feat for someone who never existed to completely and totally upend our calendar. Boy, that really puts things in perspective. You exist, and yet your impact on the world has been less than someone who never even existed. Sad. Now, most biblical scholars would agree that Jesus was not born in the year 1 AD. That was a slight miscalculation from a monk. The Bible tells us in Luke that Jesus began his ministry when he was about 30 years of age, which was after his baptism by John the Baptist. And according to scripture, John the Baptist begins his ministry in the 15th year of Tiberius Caesar. That's around 29 AD. Jesus was baptized shortly thereafter, so you subtract from that, and you get to around 2 or 3 BC, which is what the early church fathers said as well in their writings. So AD and BC is slightly inaccurate, but it doesn't suddenly become more accurate by changing names. That's a silly objection. Next objection. BC and AD privilege the role of Christianity in a society where it is no longer the defining belief system. Separation of church and state, remember? I do remember a random line from Thomas Jefferson in a letter. I also remember that states had official churches even into the 19th century in the United States. I further remember that BCAD applied to all manner of systems of governments, not just constitutional republics. BC and AD privileges the role of Christianity in society because Christianity had a privileged role in shaping society. You don't get to a constitutional republic with inalienable rights endowed by a creator without being informed by Christian thought. And this is really the biggest thing. People really don't realize the extent to which their values and ideas have been shaped by Christendom and Christian worldviews. They're sawing off the branch that they're standing on and don't even realize it. Next objection. BC and AD imply the validity or truth of Christian theology, specifically that Jesus is a god. Yes, and the fact that Jesus of Nazareth had such an impact on the world that we are all collectively approaching the year 2022 also implies the validity or truth of Christianity. Specifically, that Jesus is God, not that he is a God. If you're going to use the word specifically, you should be more specific in your description of Christian theology. Next objection. BC and AD force non-Christians to imply or acknowledge the supremacy of Christianity. And that's a problem? Next objection. AD is awkward to use with centuries as opposed to specific dates, 12th century CE, while 12th century AD means the 12th century in the year of our Lord, which makes little sense. I'll give you that one. That, that one is valid. Next objection. Opposition to BCE and CE tends to be based on religious rather than academic grounds, thus demonstrating that using them involves submitting to a religious agenda. There are no academic grounds. The rejection of BC and AD is only a religious objection. The only reason that will be ringing in the year 2022 is because of religious reasons. That's entirely why the year is what the year is. That's a fact. Pretending that it's not does not magically make it more academic. If anything, it becomes less academic because it's less historic. It's actively ahistoric. It's a denial of the foundational influence of Christianity in the world. It's a denial of the history of why our calendar is the way it is. You're playing make-believe and pretending that our record of years is a secular chronology. It's not. And since when is playing make-believe and pretending academic? Now what's the big deal? Who cares? BCE? BC? That's not important. Well, if it's not important, then why are they actively trying to change it? I'll let Learn Religion explain. Perhaps it isn't much, but every time you use BCE, 
and CE instead of BC and AD, you are showing respect for non-Christian cultures, religions, as well as refusing to submit yourself and your writings to a Christian agenda that is all about asserting dominion over culture, politics, society, and even your very thought processes. Agreed, it isn't much, but the small things matter in shaping culture, and using BCE and CE instead of BC and AD in your writings is for a secular agenda that is all about asserting dominion over culture, politics, society, even your very thought processes. They explain further, Domination is frequently founded on little things that people take for granted and or don't feel are individually worth the trouble of fighting. Collectively, though, all those little things add up to quite a lot and make domination far easier. When we learn to question the little things and resist taking them for granted, it becomes easier to question the big things as well, thus making resistance to the entire superstructure of privilege easier. Yeah, but the short-sightedness of this statement is that secular progressivism is the dominant force in the culture. Or as they even said, Christianity is no longer the defining belief system. BCE and CE is in service to the dominant belief system. But take heart. It is in fact the year of our Lord, and one day every knee will bow and every tongue confess that he is the common era. Well, that's all for today. Have a happy new year. Make it your resolution to follow me on socials, like, share, subscribe, rate, review, and I'll see you back here in the new year for more Appropriating the Culture. <laughs>